Sail away Sail away January 7, 2019, early in the morning when we arrive at the airport for our flight to begin leaving on our boat full time. This will be our trial run as liveaboards for three months and Harley's first real experience of being a boat dog. Coffee to get us started and a screwdriver to celebrate on the flight. This is about to get real. We arrived in Mobile Bay and made our final prep on journey in order to pull out early the morning of January 9th. As we cruised under the Dog River Bridge and out into the bay, we were both anxious as a new chapter in our lives was beginning. It was cold that morning and the breeze was up, but we safely crossed the bay and into the ICW for our cruise up to the Pensacola area. The wind settled down a little bit. It's much nicer, warming up a little bit. Over Delaware. And so now we're headed out. We're gonna make a left up here and head down to Pensacola. We pushed hard that first day and arrived just before sunset. Remember, days are short this time of year. In Navarre and anchored in a spot just under the Navarre Bridge. The evening was beautiful and we enjoyed the sunset at the end of our first day as liveaboards. The next morning, we cruised out the Destin Pass into the Gulf waters heading to Port St. Joe. The Gulf waters were calm and we were able to bypass the ICW. Harley once again enjoyed the sun and we soon would learn that with engines running and the sun shining, she would be most content. Just before pulling into Port St. Joe, we passed along the coastline of Mexico Beach where the Eye of Michael crossed a few months before. We could see the tattered coastline and partial structures that were still standing. The next day we saw the sun rise early in Port St. Joe as we began our pass under the bridge into the intercoastal toward Apalachicola. We arrived early afternoon into Apalachicola and had our first incident. We had decided to stop for fuel and get off the boat. This would be our first time off since we left Mobile Bay. We knew Harley needed a chance to get to shore. Turning off the channel, we took a little shortcut and set Journey down on the shallow bottom. Dee worked hard to wiggle her off, and we didn't have to make that phone call. But some silt was sucked up into the engine compartment, and we spent more time working on the engine to get everything cleaned out before having time off the boat. But Harley still appreciated the stop, even though it was shorter than expected, as we needed to find a good anchorage for the night. We chose a quiet spot in St. George Sound for the night, with a beautiful beach area. Harley and I enjoyed watching the sunset after an exciting day. We were tired and glad to make a stop to rest up and wait for the window to cross the gulf over to Steinhatchee. The next day we took Holly to the beach to explore and she enjoyed stretching her legs and running free along the beach. And we were able to take some new shots of Journey out on the water after all the work we have done in Mobile. After having so much work done in Mobile, Alabama on Journey, we were super excited to have this opportunity while out in Shelby to get some new, updated pictures and video of our journey. She is looking nice and sleek in the water. This clip is a favorite. But looking at this clip now, we realize that we can't wait for everyone to see some of the new aesthetics we have updated. Coming soon. After some downtime from cruising and allowing a front to pass through early one morning, we jumped out into the gulf to begin our crossing, leaving Caravelle and the Dog Island Anchorage behind. Just before sunset, we arrived in Steinhatchee, Florida, and docked for the night at the Sea Hag. This was our first night at dock since pulling out of Mobile Bay. We were glad to be tied to the dock for the night after such a long day and were able to grab a beer and watch the sun go down from their top deck. After a great meal at Roy's, who gladly drove over and picked us up and brought us back to the Sea Hag, what service! We enjoyed a peaceful night before starting down towards Cedar Key. We made a quick overnight stop in Cedar Key before heading into Crystal River, where we planned to spend a few days enjoying the manatees. The trip up Crystal River was even better than we thought, even with the weather turning colder and colder. We anchored in Kings Bay for the first time when neighbors anchored around us. 
The sunsets and sunrises were just perfect here. Our first adventure was out to do laundry. We were in walking distance of a laundromat that, yes, had Wi-Fi, so Dee was able to get some work done after the work was done, we planned our adventure into the springs to see the manatees. The next day, we bundled up and set out to find the springs and the manatees. The warm, clear waters made it easy to spot the manatees, and they were sometimes very curious about us, and one moved in really close to check us out. Maybe Holly was what they were curious about. We enjoyed our stay here, but the cold weather was pushing us further south, so we watched our last sunset in Kings Bay and prepared to move down to Tarpon Springs area. As we cruised down to Tarpon Springs and into the mouth of the Anaclote River, we were working to find another place to dock for a few days, as a very bad front was headed our way and the winds were going to be up. We needed to get inland to close in our home in North Carolina and meet up with friends in the area and wanted to secure a journey at a dock for a few days. Finally, we were able to secure a spot at the Anaclote Village Marina, where I believe the dock master just took pity on me because I could find no other dock space. So, they made room for us. We were just in front of Miss Vicky's restaurant and it was a perfect spot for a few days. We enjoyed beautiful sunsets and Harley enjoyed the front deck as we listened to music and watched the pelicans enjoy the fish cleaning station at Miss Vicky's. Did we mention the dolphins that played in our wake along the way? Fish just never gets old. A short ride up the river in Shelby would dump us into Tarpon Springs where we signed our closing papers, overnighted the paperwork off, and celebrated with two-for-one margaritas at Yanni's. We definitely recommend their margaritas. Sit at the bar and tell them soulmates sent you. The sale was final on our North Carolina home. Now we really are officially live aboards. While on the Anaclote River, we were able to catch up with some of our Florida friends we had met while RVing. We hosted them on Journey for the Day and enjoyed catching up and discovering new drinks. The next day, our Endeavor boat friends took us off journey and around Tarpon Springs and shared the infamous Anaclote River Boat Club with us. This is an iconic establishment with nothing like nothing we have ever seen. We had a wonderful time exploring this place with them and listening to some good music. Many thanks to Mary who provided us with some homemade chili to keep us warm. The front passed, but not without our second incident. We left Shelby tied to the dock and attached to one of the davits. In the middle of the night, we were awakened by a loud noise and found Shelby sideways in the water. New motor partially submerged. Thanks to the davit, she was saved from sinking, but the new motor would need a little love to recover. The next morning, we found that it really was as shallow as everyone told us around the Anaclote Village Marina. Wow! But the tide came back and the waters returned, and we headed south to continue to seek warmer weather. We headed down the ICW toward the Tampa Bay area with an overnight stop at Reddington Shores Beach to try and work on Shelby's new motor. We drained the oil, replaced the oil, still no luck. After several phone calls, thankfully, Curtis at Northeast Marine came to our rescue. He picked up Shelby and Dee, brought her back to his shop, replaced the oil pressure sensor, which thankfully was all that was wrong with our new motor, and returned them safely to the boat launch near Journey. Now that all is well, we're headed down into Gulfport and the Bogusiga Bay, where we'll spend a week before heading back to North Carolina. The week in Gulfport was cold and windy, but the sunsets were perfect. We got some boat work done, explored Gulfport, found the getaway at Maximo, and a happy hour you should not miss after catching up with our broker, Lou. We began preparing journey to be left at the Gulfport City Marina. We are on our way home, only to return in a week to begin month two on journey. Oh, and I forgot, a new Shelby is on the way to journey. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away.